And then finally, here's this grotesque image of art with a voodoo doll. Now, if you don't believe that the Catholic Church is moving right into the field of the Eastern religions, in other words, as all the Protestants are being folded into Catholicism, the Catholic Pope has taken all of these people, Billy Graham, Kenneth Copeland, Oral Roberts, uh, Jack Van Impey, Chuck Colson. He's taken them by the hand, and where is he leading them? He's leading them into the deviltry of the Eastern religions, Hinduism, Buddhism, and all the others, African tribal worship, witchcraft, voodoo. All of these things are being melded in, molded in to the Catholic Church and accepted. So when you accept the Pope of Rome and his uh, new catechism, you're accepting African tribal worship, the witch doctors, Native American Indian worship of the so-called Great Spirit. You're accepting these horrible, hideous apostate teachings as well. Don't think for a moment you're not. For example, did you know that this Pope has given credit to Mary himself for saving his life? Remember he was shot some years ago? He, he reached over to look at a picture of Mary that a kid was carrying. And at that moment, the bullet struck his body. And he said it missed his heart only by an inch or so because of Mary. He goes each year, Pope John Paul II, to Fatima, Portugal. And there he worships the images of Mary. Here, first of all, we see the Mary of the Roses. And look on Mary's head, this idol. She has a crown. She is queen of heaven. Now here, from USA Today, August 12, 2004. Look at this article. It says, Pope to Grace City of Miracles. Lourdes, France. They claim that Mother Mary once appeared there to children and that people who go there can see great miracles of healing in their bodies. And people go from all over the world to Lourdes, France to pray. Here we have Pope John Paul II. Look at this picture. This is the city of miracles, Lourdes, France. And it says in this caption here in this picture, the Pope has gone deep into a cave deep in the bowels of the earth into a cave to worship the statue of Mary with all of those candles. Isn't that odd to the darkness of a cave? Deep in the bowels of the earth to worship Mary? And he also goes each year to Fatima. Interestingly, there are some Catholics who worship Mary that say, you know, it's good for the Pope to come to Fatima, Portugal to worship Mary every year in a special invocation. But now, they say, the Vatican and the cardinals and the bishops are approving for Hindus to come and have their worship service. They say this is desecration. In other words, it's okay to worship Mary, but the Hindus should not be joined with the Catholics in doing so. This is actually Catholic Family News newspaper. Here's the article I want you to see. It says, Report of Hindu Desecration at Fatima. There where they have the statue of Mary and the, the, the cathedral to, that they built to Mary. They're saying that Hindus have been invited by the Holy Father, uh, the assistance of the Holy Father. By the way, the Holy Father, they call him himself, uh, although the Bible says Jesus has called no man father. They don't care what the Bible says. They have their traditions. The Pope went over to uh, India and received the great mark of the god Shiva in his forehead from a Hindu priestess. Yes, that is true. And now we have the, the, the papal uh, officials inviting these Hindu gurus and others to come to to Fatima, Portugal, to, to do all of their rituals at the very cathedral that's been built to honor Mary. Look at some of these pictures. Here, we have a picture, and the caption says, a close-up of the Hindu priest as he desecrates the most holy altar at Fatima. These words, by the way, this caption actually comes from Father Nicholas Gruner and his organization. They are opposed to the Hindus. They're okay for worshiping Mary, but opposed to the Hindu worship. Notice the little mark on this man's forehead in the so-called third eye region. 
and the statue of Mary with her crown behind him. In this next picture, we have the Hindu guru or priest and some of his so-called Hindu pilgrims at the sacred el el uh, altar there in the Catholic Church at Fatima. Can you imagine the Catholics allowing the Hindus to worship all of their Hindu gods and goddesses? Now, in this picture, we have the Hindu guru or priest investing the rector, that means the head, the head priest of the Fatima Shrine, Monsignor Luciano Guerra, with a Hindu prayer shawl. Now, this Hindu prayer shawl has verses from the Bhagavad Gita, the Hindu Bible, written all over it. And here is this priest going to put it on over his black garb. Here, again, is a bishop, a Catholic bishop, Seraphim de Salsa Ferreira e Silva, the Bishop of Fatima. He willingly accepts the Hindu prayer shawl with all of the Hindu scriptures all over it. What a desecration indeed that is. Not too long ago I received a magazine called Modern Manna in the mail. I looked at it very carefully and it says that there's going to be a world Sabbath of religious reconciliation. I found that interesting. A world Sabbath of religious reconciliation? The world Sabbath. What a desecration of the Sabbath day. It says this will be held, and it was held back in January of 2000. It's the first interfaith holy day. Look at this symbol. There you have the great sun god of the Hindus and, of course, the Nazis adopted a version of this for their own. The great will of the sun god, Lucifer, the solar angel. And then on the other page, here they reprinted an article, the Press Enterprise, it says October 29, 1999. John Paul II over here, the headline says, summons world's religions to Vatican to solve common problems. And then this newspaper article says leaders of 20 faiths unite in denouncing extremism. If you're a fundamentalist who believe in the word of God, my friends, you are an extremist. And the Pope led leaders of 20 different religions all together in renouncing your faith. That's what went on at this great meeting. Here's the Pope as we see him with other world leaders at Assisi. He's met many times in these great global meetings. And they've had everything from snake handler priests from Togo uh, to witches to Native American Indian doctors to African tribal witch doctors and so forth, all coming together as one. Ex-Protestants, listen to me. The Vatican is rising. It's rising, all right. And it's bringing you with it and you have a rope around your neck, you're being hung with all the evil doctrines and teachings and practices of the Catholic Church because you have become one with the Pope and the Vatican. One of the things that I think is most dreadful is the Vatican's worship of Mary. But not the Mary of the Bible. That would be okay for us to at least acknowledge her, to love that Mary, as I'm sure Jesus loved her. I hope to see Mary someday in heaven. I really do. But I'm not going to bow down and worship her. She has become an idol. She has become a venerated icon. And now you have statues. They claim they cry. They sweat blood. Uh, some of them have known to, been known to talk to people. And they're worshipped by millions. Not too long ago, some friends of the ministry sent me this video messages from heaven. It shows remarkable things about the universal worship of Mary. Did you know that many Protestants are now beginning to worship Mary? They're beginning to travel to all of these sites, Lourdes, Fatima, Medjugorje, or down in Mexico at Guadalupe. And they're all acknowledging Mary as the mother of God and the mother of Christianity. And incredible miracles, they say, are being given by Mary. And Mary has been telling people to pray to her, and she will intercede. She calls herself the mediatrix, the mediatrix.